Hello, my name's Ben. And my name's Josh. And welcome back to FPL Graduates. Welcome back to another video. And we've got an early deadline. It is today, Tuesday. Um, obviously, we're recording this on the Monday, but the deadline's on the Tuesday. Let's get into the transfer targets that we think you should be looking at getting into your team for this week. Okay, yeah, so really quick turnaround this week, literally less than, what, 48 hours between the last game finishing and then the first game of game week 31. So let's take a look at some of the best transfer targets to bring in for this week and for the upcoming game week. So starting off, we've got Kiwiel. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably absolutely butchered it. Um, but the Arsenal defender, he's currently priced at 4.4 million, which is a fantastic value asset to get into that Arsenal defence. One of the main caveats here is that Minutes are definitely not secured. Tommy Asu obviously came off the bench at the weekend. Zinchenko was also a part of that squad as well. What's your thoughts on him, Ben? Do you think it's too risky and you just should sort of pay the price for like the likes of Gabriel? Or do you think he's worth the punt? I think a lot of managers will have one of Gabriel and Saliba and slash or Saliba. And the point is, really, with a lot of people who have wildcard and, and with their teams in general, is they're not, there's not a lot of budget. So Kibior is... Definitely a great option to look at. At the price point he's at, you save him 0.5. Yes, he might get the occasional one pointer off the bench, but I think all in all, his potential of getting the minutes is is pretty decent. So I really like the uh, the option there. Awesome. And then moving on to another player who might become a rotation risk in future game weeks, it's Connor Bradley. He's obviously got Sheffield United at home this week and picked up two bonus points last week despite not getting any returns at all. Obviously created a lot of chances in that game. I, I personally got him on my wildcard draft. What's your thoughts on him, Ben? Yeah, I mean, the only risk is Trent Alexander-Arnold is targeting a return against Manchester United in game week 32. So it's a difficult one because I will say by game week 34 which is the game week you want him for could very well be completely out of the picture in terms of minutes so I would only risk him if you've not currently got many if any fires in your team at all if you have got one or two problems in your team he's probably not the solution to go to at the moment yeah, definitely agree with that. And then moving on to some more differential picks. We've got Ike Nori. Obviously, we've been banging the drum about him for a couple of weeks now. Had a big chance against Aston Villa at the weekend, which could have seen him score again. His attacking threat is absolutely crazy with all the injuries at the moment in that wall side. What's your thoughts on him, Ben? Should have got another goal in game week 30 and just goes to show he's been a fantastic asset and was unlucky to come away with two points. Personally, I think he should have come away with probably eight, <laughs> nine points. Um, from that game his attacking position was great big chances you're not seeing many left backs getting clear cut chances like that every single week at the moment so I definitely think he's one of the must have defenders to own right now yeah definitely agree and obviously Wolves do double in uh, game week 34 alongside Arsenal Liverpool and Crystal Palace as well so these are the real teams that you need to be targeting especially if you're not on a wild card at the moment um, Mitchell and Munoz they sort of go together as well the two Palace wing backs their attacking data has been really really good since the new managers come in and obviously changed the system playing that five at the back formation for me I think Munoz just trumps Mitchell but if you're maybe free hitting and going 34 I think both are really nice differentials uh, what's your thoughts on those Ben? Yeah, both really good differential options and ones you've got to be prepared to, to bench from sort of gaming 32 onwards to make sure you have a deep enough squad to be able to deal with that if you're bringing them in. But definitely for the double, two of the best defensive fixtures really out of any of the teams for for that double game week. So definitely looking at getting some of those guys in ahead of potentially Aitnori, Kiwi or maybe difficult, but as a fifth defender, perfect. Okay, so moving on into the midfielders and a midfielder that I think everyone is going to be bringing in this week if they haven't done already is Mohamed Salah. Got Sheffield United at home. A couple of de decent fixtures before a double game week as well, Josh. Um, probably the, the must-have, must-own midfielder in the game right now. Oh, 100%. When I had him captain last week... He was only like 80-odd percent owned in the top 10k, which I thought was really, really low, expecting him to be over 100%. Um, so, yeah, he's a must-own this week. Sheffield United at home. I don't think we need to really discuss that too much, but he's a fantastic asset. What was it, 12 shots at the weekend against Brighton? I'm not sure. Me and you watched it live together, didn't we? And I'm not sure how he only came away with the one goal. But, yeah, you need him in your teams this week for the captaincy. Yes, and one guy who did come away with a couple of returns is Luis Diaz at the weekend. And his underlying data has actually been the best out of any midfielder in the Premier League of, from the last sort of five, six game weeks. 
I do think he's a really underrated asset, a big differential for those climbing the ranks. Josh, do you think the same way or is there potential again rotation risk come game week 34 if you're looking at Lewis Diaz? Yeah, potentially slight rotation risk, but we don't have any sort of confirmed return dates for the likes of Jota. Um, it, it was said in the press conference last week that he has a similar sort of return date to like Allison and Trent. So I think they're all sort of targeting that game week 33, 34 ish. Um, but even then, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that these guys are going to be playing 90 minutes as soon as they come back. You know, they're not going to be risked too heavily. I know they've got the title running and stuff like that, but. I think there's a lot of eggs in different baskets with Liverpool at the moment. Obviously, still in Europe as well. So, for me, he's a really nice differential. And I think if you're not looking to get Darwin Nunez, or say if you're happy with your front three, maybe, then he's a perfect alternative to go to. And obviously, you're going to probably be getting rid rid of the likes of maybe the Arsenal midfielders, potentially, if you're free hitting soon. Um, So, yeah, he's a perfect, perfect at it. Okay, so next up is Kai Havertz of Arsenal. Now, Josh has put him in because he's fairly keen on him compared to Bukayo Saka. Interesting, because he's in a decent sort of vein of form for Arsenal. The stats are looking pretty decent as well. And with the enticing double coming up, Pavlats could be a cut price option um, if you are looking to, for a little bit more of a budget midfielder. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, as Ben mentioned, a sort of looking at him as an alternative to Saka, depending on his injury um, that he's limped off with at City... Um, I think even still, you could potentially look at a double up in Arsenal attack with Havertz. He's like you say, his recent figures have been like matching Saka. He's had two double digit hauls in a row against I think Sheffield United and Newcastle. Obviously, he blanked against City, but I wouldn't really that doesn't really put me off him. You know, he's playing up top. He's been really, really good this season. So for me, yeah, nice price, similar to Diaz. Really, not necessarily the go to asset at these teams, but. They're performing as well, if not just as good as the, the, the premium assets that we're typically choosing right now. And then we can band in those last two midfielders that we've got on our list together as the midfield enablers for those looking to move on to the likes of Salah into their team. You're going to have to drop down the price of someone. And Eberich Eze and Pablo Sarabia could provide some really decent value, especially for the double. Eze is a bit of a talismanic or more of a talismanic figure, whereas Sarabia has potentially got sort of the more attacking team going forwards. Both really good options, both cut price and both that midfield enabler to help you sort of move on to Salah. Yeah, Defo, Sarabia as well, well, both of them, both on set pieces as well, which is really handy. Sarabia is super cheap. He's only 4.7 million. So if you really need to save funds, say if you don't have a Salah or a Haaland in your team, he's probably the one to go to. Other than that, Eze, obviously a really good asset. He's proved it for, for seasons now at the moment. Obviously, Elise is in like partial team training so he's not the go-to asset right now so for me i'd be bringing in as a with a really tasty fixture this week okay then finally moving on to the forwards we've got darwin nunez of course he's one of the most sort of must own assets at the moment if you're looking at the sheffield united fixture or he didn't return against brighton at the weekend didn't really get involved too much either but for me i still think he's just a little bit better than louis diaz at the moment um, obviously causes absolute chaos as always. What's your thoughts on him, Ben? Yeah, it causes chaos. There is a slight issue of the yellow cards accumulating for uh, Darwin Nunez, which could, of course, mean for the double an issue. Um, but in terms of sort of his underlying stats, it's fantastic. And Liverpool have got some really good fixtures coming up, some really tasty looking ones. So I can imagine a lot of FPL managers are going to bring him in. For me, myself, I'm potentially priced out of him because of the price rises and falls, which some managers may sort of come across if they're trying to upgrade and downgrade sort of their midfield and attack. There's not too much budget to play with, but Darwin is going to be a fantastic asset nonetheless. Yeah, defo. And then moving on to one of the budget picks. I know, Ben, you're thinking about bringing him in this week. It is Mateta. Obviously, really cheap. Five, I think it's 5.5 million at the moment. Um, and the talismanic striker, I guess you could say, for Crystal Palace. Um, scoring goals, being quite consistent, to be fair, this season to him. Um, what's your thoughts on him, Ben? Obviously, you're the other one bringing him in. Yeah, yeah, really, really cheap. He's actually he's actually cheaper than you thought he was. He's four point nine at the Jeez. moment, which is um, which is ridiculous uh, in terms of the pricing and probably the perfect budget enabler for a double game week striker because obviously Edward is out with a long term injury, so that means Mateta is the main focal point. Of course, Crystal Palace aren't too prolific going forwards, but if they can get a couple of games where they find a bit of rhythm, Mateta is going to be at the end of absolutely everything. 
Yeah, Defo. And then our last pick is someone who I wouldn't say I've forgotten about, but he he just w- didn't come into my wildcard thinking at all. I think that's because I'm free hitting in game week 34. But if you don't have him and you're not free hitting in game week 34, then he's a really, really good asset at the moment. It's Dom Solanke. Some really tasty fixtures in the build-up to the double that Bournemouth has, have as well. Um, obviously, returned last week. Ben, you own him, right? Uh, what's your thoughts on him? Yeah, do own him and I think um, will be overlooked by a lot of wildcard managers. But everyone will have him for game week 34 as well. So... Definitely worth bearing him in mind. A lot of managers have got excited by the picks that are sort of seeming to, to bang and have a high ceiling, but he's just so, so consistent. So it's never worth ruling out Dom Solanke and almost even worth having a look at the double ups. Menyo could be a, another decent budget option as well, should you need to, to go to Bournemouth. Okay, so that wraps up our Game Week 31 transfer targets. Hopefully, that has helped you decide what transfers are important going into this game week. If we haven't answered your question, make sure you leave it in the comments down below and we'll hopefully reply to you before the 6pm deadline. Yeah, and remember to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, I've been Ben. I've been Josh. And we'll see you guys later. Have a good game week, everyone. Oh, you may rise, but you'll never make me want to stick around.